All right. There we are. So, Hello. good evening. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Mike. Hope things are going well. They are. Um, yeah. Canadian fires have left for the time being, so Vic is uh, Vic's cutting us a break, I guess. That's good. Good. He's not, not barbecuing this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, a lot of big news, a lot of big things going on. I, You know, in my searches, uh, I dug into a lot more Jaws 2 things than I really ever realized or was aware of. Um, I mean, I'm a big Jaws 2 fan, not as much as Jaws, but I felt like I needed to kind of step my game up a little bit, maybe learn a little more, investigate a little more. And I spent a lot of extra time uh, diving into some things and came across some pretty interesting things, Mike. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, I figured you being here, you would definitely be our authority this evening. So, well, I will denounce any rumor that's not true, and I will confirm any rumor that is, <laughs> unless I don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, we can kind of get some things going. Let me double check here. Up, oh, we got some comments popping in already. All right, what we got here? Jaws today. It is Jaws today. That's right. 45th anniversary. You know, it's hard to believe. I can remember going to see Jaws 40th uh, on, on Father's Day. Got a re-release, so it's uh, time's going by pretty quick. Very quick here. Let me pull up some guys. I wouldn't miss this. It's got to be our good friend Vic. Hey, Vic, we were just talking about you. We're glad that you're not blowing smoke our way this week. That's right. Vic's here. Uh, Robert. Robert's off from school. Oh, um, that's oh. Robert again. He's over in over in merry old England. So glad to have you back, Robert. Yeah, very nice, Robert. Haven't seen you in quite a while, so very really yeah. good to have you back. One of those one of those young kids that thinks that he's got to have a education to make it in life, and that's very true. So good for you. If you don't it believe is. me, ask. Don't believe me, ask the teacher. <laughs> Goes a long way, no matter what you're doing. No matter what aspect, <laughs> got to have some background knowledge. You bet you. I'm going through that with my son right now. He's going in the vocations. I told him, so you want to go in? That's great. It's a great time. They're, they are struggling for people. Time to get the trade school in, you know? No oh, good. I told my son years ago, like 19, and he graduated in 2001. If didn't know what you wanted to do. I told him to join the Air Force to become an air traffic controller because by the time you ETS out of the Air Force, all the all the air traffic controllers that got hired in 1980 when Reagan fired them all, they're going to be retiring. You're going to have a job. But uh, he just went to school and played baseball. He didn't didn't pay attention to me. So. Hey, <laughs> we've all been there, Mike. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We have all been there. I yeah, yeah. Chose my way and had to redirect once or twice. Still did. Still did. So all right. So listening up. My wife is on tonight. She's out on a nice walk, listening while she's walking tonight. Oh good. Wasn't gonna welcome, listen, welcome. So. Yeah. All right. So get another comment or two and I say we get the show on the road because there's a lot. Wow. Information. Okay. My wife would be here, but she is babysitting tonight uh, because tonight uh, the Chiefs get their Super Bowl ring. And um, okay. my nephew is a trainer, so he gets another ring tonight. Somebody's got to okay. watch the baby. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Very impressive. I know Vic's a Steelers yeah. fan. I don't know why. I went to college not too far from Pittsburgh. We were about 40 minutes from Pittsburgh, and uh, I didn't have anything against Steelers people until I lived out there. Um, and, and this is someone who was very close to Philadelphia growing up, and it's there's some parallels there. There, there really is. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was there the year that they uh, played Dallas in the Super Bowl, and if you were wearing anything on college campus. That was Dallas related. It was probably not a good night for you. <laughs> yeah, well. Robert, I always thought you were in England. I'm sorry. I did not mean to if you Scotland. took it as a slight that you were in England. You're in Scotland. You you and Sean Connery, you're in good company. So 
Yes. Or the Isles. I did not say uh, England to be uh, derogatory. I love England. Spent a week there in London, 1981. I want to go back. <laughs> never been there. Never been across the pond. I'm from there. I mean, my family's from there originally, Welsh and British, but never, uh, never been there. So. All right. Well, uh, here we are getting sidetracked right off the bat. So this is as always, as always. At least we're on track. Right. Let's uh, get some things going. All Don right. Gale here. Don popped in. Hi, Don. Uh, what do we got so, here? Somebody's upset with me over this deal. So, starting off, so let's get into it. So we got uh, Jaws 2, 45th anniversary. Um, and uh, off the bat, uh, you know, I found myself going back this week, Mike, and I'm pulling up on YouTube old episodes of the show. And I'm going back over all the people that you guys interviewed and re-watching all of them. So I'm like, okay, I don't want to regurgitate everything. I want to try and definitely hit some of these things, but maybe, you know, jump in to throw up some different things. And the first thing that came up to me, I started doing a search to get ready for tonight, was this happens to be the Budapest poster for Jaws 2 original. Never saw it before. Uh-uh. So, I like you know, it. Yeah, a little different, a little, uh, a little grainy, but... Um, so I don't know how many of you guys have put an order in for this, but um, the Jaws 2 45th anniversary release, uh, I believe it's coming out. They're doing a, a regular release, and they're also doing a steel booklet version that apparently has a lot of extras, a 40-page booklet, uh, some other different things going on. Know any information about that? Uh, I know it's expensive. Um I got mine off of eBay, oh, really? um, but it's got some great, uh, great little uh, collectibles in there. Um, um, it's got reproductions of the lobby cards and um, where most films have eight lobby cards, like the Jaws set has eight. Um, in 1977, um, Universal split from National Screen Service. National Screen Service uh, did all the posters and distributed them and, and the photos and trailers and everything. And they went with a company called Donald Veldy Company in New York. Um, all Veldy would do, whereas um, National Screen Service had uh, one sheets and 14 by 36 inserts and 22 by 28s and 40 by 60s and six sheets. Uh, all Veldi offered were one sheets and four lobby cards. Um, and the bad thing was most uh, AMC theaters used inserts, uh, the 14 by 36, as did uh, I work at AMC theaters at the time. And what we would have to do is take a one sheet and then take the little uh, plexiglass cover that goes in the poster case, put it over a poster, and we would have to trim the posters. We'd have to cut the posters as best really? we could to, to emphasize the art. Um, but that's why there's um, there are four uh, lobby cards instead of eight because the Veldi company was cheap, and um, eventually uh, they went they went back to National Screen Service just from complaints from exhibitors because you couldn't, um, you know, if you had the wall space or the lobby space. And, and you wanted a, a six sheet poster, which is probably, I don't know, five foot by 120 inches, five foot by six or seven foot. You couldn't order them. You, 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 you were stuck. You were stuck with just a one sheet or four little lobby cards. So, but um, it's nice. So they're reproducing the original set. They didn't come up with, you know, they didn't make stuff up, but um, yes, I had, a, I ordered mine off of, off of eBay. Uh, the link uh, that we posted on on this page and the Jaws 50 page, uh, they were sold out. They were sold out immediately. So I'm assuming. Um, so I don't know what the original price was. Um, I know what I paid for it. Um, so I'm assuming that uh, like Cabbage Patch dolls and Furbies and Teddy Ruxpin, which uh, my girlfriend uh, went all over Baltimore to find for my son for Christmas. Um, I'm sure it was a substantial markup. 
but this is one of those things that I, I, I've got to have it. So. Yeah, I have not put it in order for it yet. I saw this advertisement came out. I think they were doing pre-orders back in May, and that went up. That went up quick. And I'll, to be honest with you, I kind of dropped the ball on it. Um, I do have the uh, one, the last one from Jaws they did about a year ago. No, it must have been longer than that. That came with a booklet, the whole deal. Um, mm -hmm. But but the booklet was was when, when they assembled the booklet, pages were wrong, information was wrong. So you were reading. The um, informational page for, say, Hooper, and it was um, in sequence next to Brody's picture well. <laughs> and, vice, and vice versa. So it uh, must have been in a rush to get it out. So hopefully they won't have that problem uh, with this one. Yeah. Hey, we got Kelly on here. Kelly saying hello tonight, guys. Hey, Kelly, welcome, hello. welcome. Yeah, absolutely. What else got John Conway? Where, yeah. Very nice. So kind of moving things along here because there is a lot to cover. So, and this is honestly, this is going to be more your forte than me because I don't have the background with Jaws 2, not nearly as much as I do the first one. So Jaws 2 novelization uh, compared to the movie, was there big differences, Mike? Do you know? Uh, it, the Jaws 2 novelization, which is based on uh, How Howard Sackler and Dorothy Tristan's script, um, is the film that John Hancock was going to make. Um, because of all the marketing and everything, the paperback was rushed into, you know, as soon as they got everything, they rushed it in so it was out. And then, of course, when all this was being done, um, you know, the script changed and Carl came along. Um, but uh, Dorothy, neither Dorothy nor Howard Sackler uh, got a dime uh, from the paperback sales. Um it is very dark. Um, Amity is a ghost town. Um, if you've if you've read uh, the Jaws two book, you'll see some photos that Edith Blake had taken on the set uh, during the John Hancock time, where uh, the stores are boarded up and everything is is desolate. Um, it establishes that the that the shark is a female, uh, that the shark is looking for its mate, uh, who is Bruce. And that the shark is pregnant. Also, there's a great mafia undertone uh, building a casino on the island, and Larry Vaughn's involved in that. Um, not as many kids. Um, so um, it's, uh, if, if you want to, I mean, unfortunately, we'll never see the John Hancock version, but if, if you want an idea of what the John Hancock version might have been, read the novel. Or if you have the uh, the comic book adaptation that Marvel did, the Super Special, um, that's also um, pretty good. So yeah, and I, I I caught little bits and pieces there, um, and I read that the shark was a female, and the one of the reasons why she was so up on attacking is because she was pregnant, and she was trying to, I guess, you know, make sure she was providing for the for the pups. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's there's a story. It's a story. Uh, one of the little subplots. Uh, Sean Brody finds a seal, a seal up on the beach, and he kind of adopts it. And um, you know, eventually they got to let it go, like a bird. And um, as the little baby seal uh, swims away, it's a there's a a flash, a flash of a fin, because it's it's uh, the baby, it's the baby shark. So it was almost like say you know it was almost like setting up uh, another film or or another story. Getting ready for the third one. Interesting. All right, what do we got here? Marvel Super Special Comic Magazine was on the novelization also. Yes. Interesting. Very interesting. Like I said, I'm a little out of my territory. I just don't know near as much with this. So I figured trying to be the night to get a good education. I think Joe's two cost over twice as much to make as the first one. Three times, wow. twenty-four million. Did they run? Um, did they run considerably over time, as, as same as Jaws did, or no? Um, the main reason was the the delay in filming when they replaced when they replaced John Hancock. Um, I have a couple pieces on the Daily Jaws. Uh, it's it's almost like a Jaws two theme um, this week in the Daily Jaws. Uh, but why Richard Dreyfus didn't do Jaws 2, why Spielberg didn't. 
Um, one of the main reasons being that this poster here, uh, if you're looking at your computer on your right, uh, with probably one of the greatest taglines ever and beautiful art, um, was in theaters um, before the end of Christmas of 77. Um, and they could not, um, they could not delay the filming, which would have been one of Spielberg's uh, requests because he was doing post-production on Close Encounters. He wanted right. six months to work on the film and they couldn't because Jaws 2 was the big summer film uh, for Universal that they had already sold it. And I think I've said this on back in the day, but uh, in the past, I used to have what they call blind bidding and they would call uh, a theater chain. And again, you got to remember back then there weren't 150 different theater chains and they would tell General Cinema, OK, we'll give you Jaws 2 uh, for 10 weeks. What are you going to pay us? And they say, well, we'll guarantee a uh, hundred thousand dollars. And then they'll reach out to AMC and say, we've got Jaws 2. What do you give us for 10 weeks? Uh, we'll give you ninety thousand dollars. So General Cinema would we get the movie? Um, so they already had it booked. That was already on, you know, from the from the janitor of the theater up to the to the film booker to the head of the company. They were planning on Jaws two that summer. Very cool. Hey, we've got a couple other people got blowing up here tonight with comments. We got um, Todd Hickerson is on. Is hey, he Todd. Yeah. Runners here. Of welcome, welcome. Everybody's popping in. Yeah, Keith, what's up, buddy? Yeah. yeah, a lot of people popping in tonight. Awesome. Very good to see. Nice. All right. So, and I thought I'd bring up at least a little bit about about uh, deleted scenes or, or scenes that either didn't make it in or, or simply were changed. Um, some of the obvious ones we have, you know, we all know about the helicopter scene. Um, uh, I believe the actual scene that was deleted ended up being on TV, wasn't it? Which one? Uh, the chopper attack scene. After the chopper went under. Hold on, uh, yes. That was on TV. Yeah. Um, the shot of um, the selectman and, and the mayor in the in the inner office voting on to fire Brody or not. Um, I think there was a shot, uh, the scene where he gives... Uh, uh, Peterson, a, a parking ticket. Um, yeah, they, they all made it to the uh, into the the TV version. Sadly, up on the top left, uh, the version of Billy Van Zant being eaten <laughs> uh, was yeah. not. It was not. Uh, didn't make it to the to the film, though it was though it was uh, filmed in the book. Uh, besides a couple pictures like this one on the surfboard. Uh, I've got a couple of pictures that one of the crew members took um, during during the filming of that scene. But um, according to Billy, they filmed it early on in the film, and then he wanted to do it, and then David Brown told him, well, once we're done with everything else, if you want to do it, because I guess David Brown was afraid that Billy would get eaten or drown or a shark would crush him or something. So, but um, And little Jaws 2 trivia, Billy still has that hat. So No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Very impressive. Here, wait. We got to throw it up. We got Mike Sachs coming in. I knew tonight would be the night for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and I do have a, I did try to get a little screenshot. It's a little dingy, a little hard to see at the bottom of the newest piece of, uh, of released, uh, uh, not released, but I guess what you would say cut out pieces. And that was the one that came. Was it Brazil or whatever with the, uh, the camera diver signing the camera on the bottom? So that is a very hard to make out murky, but it is there. Yeah, so I, when uh, when the Daily Jaws uh, posted that, I, I, I was I was amazed. Um, I've got to go back somewhere on VHS. I've got the I've got the original broadcast, the first time Jaws two was on TV, and I'm going to go through it and see, you know, see what all was 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 added. Um, but when I saw that, and I, I I could never find out if that was somebody, if if somebody if that was on, was it Brazil? If that was on Brazilian television, or if that was a Brazilian you know store bought, store bought VHS tape. But um, yeah, that's you know like I said when 
when I was researching the book, the only only footage the Universal had left that nobody had seen were the shark tests, and those are now on YouTube, I believe. Yeah, they are. I've seen those before. Yeah, yeah, the initial tests. Because I, I don't know if it's common now, but back then it was common practice to put deleted scenes back in. Uh, as far as I know, it was on television. That's where you would often catch some of the different things. It didn't right really because happen. what they would do, and they did it especially with The Godfather when The Godfather came on TV. Um, they would um, they would edit it for time. If you have a, like an R-rated film like Saturday Night Fever, if you put it on television, it would be an hour, an hour. A two-hour movie would be an hour long. Um, so they add stuff. They pad stuff. They showed alternate takes or alternate versions of scenes. Um, they would, um, and if I don't, I, you're probably too young to remember this, but um, actually after the success of Saturday Night Fever, it was so big that in um, in the spring of 1978, Paramount released Saturday Night Fever as in a PG version. And um, they went back and they edited it. And uh, a lot of times back then, when they were filming uh, a movie that they knew would be R-rated, they would film alternate takes. They would say, okay, Bob, this time you say MF. And then, you know, next time you say damn. Uh, you know, so they they would they would plan ahead uh, thinking of, 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 of a television because back then there was no home video. There was no cable. It was all, um, you know, what you saw. making it more, more marketable then. Wow, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's a forethought, you know, when you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, we got Sonia on. Good morning. Uh, says good morning from Australia. Hey, Sonia. Sonia. Good, good to see you. Good to see you back here with us for another uh, another episode. Um, we're both doing really well. Uh, you know, as usual, always happy being on here hanging out with you guys. So. That's right. So I'll move us through. I have a ton of slides, and if we come up on some and really doesn't seem to pertain, we'll skip right on past. Or, if, you know, if something comes up topic-wise, I can kind of jump around here a little bit. So um, try to really cover all the scenes. So the Jaws 2 log, I, I try to do a little bit of research on the Jaws 2 log. And what I uncovered um, from the Jaws 2 log was the fact that the um, uh, it took a little bit of a different approach to it. And number one, obviously, it wasn't Carl's Gottlieb, because so he had nothing to do with the movie. But he tended to kind of go, I guess he went back a little bit more towards um, Mr. Hancock's version but skewed some of the details with it do you, do you know anything about that yeah, what uh, ray loin was a journalist that universal hired he told the uh, studio's version of of the making of jaws 2 um i think tegan west who was the original mike brody um he gets mentioned more than most of the amity kids names do and that was one thing that almost every one of them uh the amity kids uh, told me when I talked to him, th they were so glad because they aren't even mentioned in the Jaws 2 log. Um, the big highlight of, of the book was that it featured photographs by Susan Ford, uh, who was the daughter of President Ford. Um, I actually uh, reached out to her for an interview, uh, very politely declined. Um, but I just wanted to know, you know, you know, do you have any other photos that you didn't share with Universal? Um, but sure. she didn't want to talk. But yeah, basically, it was uh, it was just something because Carl's book was so you know you know the Jaws log is still the the best selling making of a movie book ever, and they tried to uh, with you know all the other marketing they're doing comic books and and uh, you know trading cards they they tried to. Um, kind of double dip with with the Jaws 2 log, but it was just very clinical. It didn't have the same stories that uh, Carl offered, and Carl could offer them because Carl was there. He, he was an insider. He, he knew what they were talking about the night before they shot something, um, whereas Ray Loin was just basically, I'm assuming, just gave they gave him a stack of call sheets and said, on this day, we did this. Sure. So more or less documentation and less truly being a part of what was there. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. While we're kind of hitting on that, um, I got a little plug here. It, 
you guys have seen this. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you have not. I picked this up within the last year. This is called um, Jaws, the, the Bigger Boat Cut. And there is a gentleman over in England. Maybe you guys are familiar with Maybe not. Uh, what he did was he took both the first and second movies. He uh, put them together and put in every single possible deleted scene that he could get his hands on. Uh, and you can definitely see the difference. Uh, and then, uh, you know, but did what he could to make it as seamless as he could. And it, it truly, I mean, it, it's kind of a fun way to go through it. Uh, it does it, it in between. It says, you know, four years later or whatever, eight years later or whatever. But it does put it together very, very nicely and does a very professional job um, with the disc. And it is on it is on 4K. I enjoyed it a couple of times. I just kind of want to plug that in there. Not to get that an there. authorized release? Uh, I'm going to say no. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say no, it's not. Okay. Uh, I was I, say, you think they would have hyped the hell out of that? Um, uh, no. Uh -oh. I mean, it's it's got, got all the good stuff about Universal, but I'm going to say that, no, this is not. It is not something. Yeah. yeah. yeah I bought it personally through him, uh, and that was it. But uh, he did a very good job with it. Obviously passionate about what he's doing. So if you guys get a chance, look him up. He is. I, I, I contacted him through Facebook. One of the Jaws sites, I don't remember which one, but he's out there. Uh, really did a nice job. So. Well, while we don't condone film piracy, uh, I am going to try to find a copy. <laughs> for, for educational purposes only, of course. <laughs> research, research only. <laughs> Two years, research to see. Hammer to stay. I keep getting shorter and shorter on this thing. <laughs> a little better. <laughs> All right. What do we got? Oh, let me bring us back up here. All right. So, I, you know, we talked a little bit about this, and I, yeah, I, I, it always pays to look at, you know, John's vision uh, of the movie. As a matter of fact, last night I found myself watching um, your interview with John Hancock, and I sat and really watched it. And um, of all the other episodes, the Jaws two people are my favorite interviews. But John Hancock was was very very interesting because he didn't want to. Um, I don't know. He he didn't want to be a naysayer towards you know or anything along those lines. But he also spoke a little bit more to what he was doing and the purpose behind his. And, uh, you know, his version and uh, uh, was very fun to, to go back and watch and realize, you know, he was he was just coming off, you know, the heels of a, of a horror film or two and really, um, as he said, tried to take the seriousness and the scariness of this movie very seriously. Yes. Um, I, I've always said, and, and uh, I'm forever indebted to, to John and, and his late wife, Dorothy, for for not only speaking to me, but inviting me to their farm and sitting at their kitchen table and, and Dorothy bringing me cookies and, and talking about what had to be a horrible time in their life. I mean, yeah. John, you know, and rightly so John feels that, you know, one day you're, you're directing the sequel to the biggest film ever made and then you're gone. That's got to have, that's got to, you know, make people wonder, you know, gee, why they get rid of them? Why they get rid of them? And I'm happy to say with the book, we kind of answered a lot of those questions. It, it wasn't that he was a bad director. Or it wasn't that uh, there's anything uh, sinister or nefarious. It's just that he was making the movie that he got hired to make and then Universal didn't like it. Yeah. So I got one or two people asking about where to track down the video that I showed you. Kelly asked, I believe uh, Keith did. If you guys want, message me, and I will track it down and send you the link. I don't know if I should really send up everything publicly or not, but I'd be glad to um, to try and uh, connect you guys to the person who made those. So yeah, feel free to just you know, IM me, let me know. I'd be glad to uh, be glad to do that. Um, yeah. Send me one oh, too for educational purposes only. Of course. <laughs> one of the things I really struggled with, and I I put probably twice as much time into just getting things prepared for tonight than I normally do is I really tried to find pictures of original cast members and I know that the original film or what was made was scrapped but I figured there's got to be some pictures out there and I want to tell you what I struggled to find some uh the ones that I found were mislabeled with the the the, the actors that were in the, the the movie that was released like for example the top uh, left hand corner there um, you know, you've got Roy Scheider 
not with uh, what, what was a guillotine. There he is with, with, um, Ricky yeah, with Ricky Schroeder with his hair dyed black, and they had it mislabeled. Uh, you can tell by looking at it, it definitely wasn't him. Um, the, the middle left picture supposedly was a busload of extras that were shipped in for the movie for some of the scenes. Uh, and then obviously some shots that were made it to the film, uh, the shot of the, I don't know what you want to call it, the parasail or whatever. I believe yeah. that was one of John's shots. Yes. Um, there, there was um, the, the top middle. I, I want to say that was, that was from the, I guess the first cast of the kids that were, that were there had a little bit more involvement in the original movie than what they did. Yes. The, the first the first film had, I want to say, five teenagers. Uh, they had Mike and his girlfriend, um, Andy, uh, and then Larry Vaughn Jr., uh, who at the time was named Reeves. And I think his name is Reeves in the novelization, uh, named after uh, Dorothy Tristan's uh, nephew. Um, and uh, in this scene... Um, he uh, Brody has warned uh, Larry many times not ride your bike on the dock, and here he gives him a ticket. And uh, as cocky and no, well, I don't want to say anything else because I like David Elliott. I love David Elliott, but as cocky as Larry Vaughn Jr. was in the film, we know he was even more of a uh, of an idiot in this version. In in the original version. Um, uh, one of the scenes of uh, intensity to get the audience is uh, he picks up Sean and he holds him over the water and says, I'm going to call you shark bait. Hey, you know, and he's crying. Oh, hey, put me down. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's see. And there are a few, I, I do have a few shots um, in the book from the original production, uh, universal stills that they sent out that uh, they were sent, um, the, the cast had them and they shared them with me. I had never seen them. And it was like, oh yeah, I got this. This is like a publicity picture of us doing this or doing that. Um, top right corner, as you can tell, um, even Ellen Brody's hair was dark. That entire film was meant to be dark and, and ominous. Um, so. And the original, uh Policeman that was before Jeffrey Kramer was brought back on is in that shot too, I believe. The deputy, right? Yes, uh, Tom Roski, who played uh, probably best known as Rocco in the first two Godfather films. He's the one that he's the one that shoots. Uh, 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 spoiler alert! Uh, he's the one that shoots uh, Hyman Roth at the end. Um, yes, and he was brought on when uh, Kramer Kramer quit. Jeff quit because. Uh, they had turned the character into uh, half of a of a bumbling Keystone Cops kind of comedy team. Uh, oh, really? the other, yeah, the other policeman played by Marshall Efron, um, also in the book. So very nice. All right, moving on here. So you know, you said about such a hard time that they had. Uh, John and his in his wife. I stumbled across this article. I believe this is from the uh, the Vineyard Gazette, and this article really kind of I, I don't want to say takes a cheap shot at her, but makes it out as though she maybe bit off a little bit more than she could chew. And um, you know, going back through and listening to your interview with John last night. Uh, one of the things you guys touched base on is the fact that she was was involved a lot more than what was realized and was never given any type of credit. Uh, name never appeared anywhere. Nothing to that extent. No, Dorothy um, was a great writer. Um, uh, she has a, a uh, she had a book out, uh, kind of a loose autobiography called Joy Street. Um, picked that up. Um, but she wrote um, a lot of the films that John did later on. Um, but she just happened one day to be reading the script and said, well, you can do this, you can do that. And John was so enthusiastic about her, her uh, sele selections, suggestions that he took it to Zanuck Brown. And Zanuck Brown was like, oh, yeah, let's do that. And they hired Dorothy on as a writer. You know, it's, it's sad. It's the same. She went through the same thing Lorraine Gary did um, because she was Sid Sheinberg's wife. 
Um, uh, she's not there because she, of her talent. She's there because of who she's married to. And in both right. cases, in both cases, the, the story uh, couldn't be further, further from the truth. Um, like I said, Dorothy, Dorothy made is the one who made the shark female. Um, oh, no she, kidding. Yeah. She intentionally wanted to be female um, based on a, um, uh, uh, an incident with a, uh, a rattlesnake. Um, and, um, and in her original script uh, with Howard Sackler, um, it, it's you kind of it's more is spelled out that that it's a female. Um, so, yeah, but um, yeah, God bless her. She just she just passed about six months ago. But she was, yeah, she was yeah. Uh, an amazing woman. Um, you know, her and John came up here in twenty. I think 2017 um, he had, they had a film that they were working on that they wanted to screen uh, for an audience and they brought it up here and I got to have dinner with them. And um, got, uh, she sat next to me in my car. I got to drive him around. And, um, and she was always, you know, I told her, I said, you, you, she, she's always one of my favorite because she was just so beautiful. And, but in getting to know her, she was as beautiful inside as she was, was on the outside. It's hard to come across people like that. It really is. Yeah. When you cross paths with them, you don't uh, you don't you don't forget. Um, I got a message here from from Robert. He said uh, back couldn't see my name. I was trying to see if D Live links still work. Uh, so Robert, you're probably not aware because you haven't been around in a while. Just kind of general message back to everyone. In fact, I believe it's it's pinned at the top of the of the websites. So yes. we're now using StreamYard, uh, which works very similar to what DLive was. And so if you want your name to show up, if you go into the pin link and go in there and give StreamYard permission to show your name, your name will come up. Uh, yes. So just, kind of a, just kind of a heads up now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kelly's kind of backing us up there on that. So there's an interesting question. Did, um, did Dorothy act in any of John's films? Uh, she is in Prancer. She is in Big Wednesday. Um, she was in um, some of his later stuff. Um, um, Swan Song. And um, which I believe I'm always confused. It was either Looking Glass and became Swan Song or it was Swan Song and became Looking Glass. Um, she even had a uh, 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 a uh, quick bit in his uh, last film, Girls This Summer. Um, sadly, uh, uh, within probably two years before she passed, um, Dorothy started uh, getting into um, Alzheimer's. And uh, oh, really? so she was not as able to do as much um, as she had in the past. But um, I, I believe Looking Glass or Swan Song, Slash Slash, I think it's on YouTube. You can find it. It's an excellent film. Um, she is great in it, and um, with her uh, work in Clute, Down and Out in Beverly Hills, and uh, Swashbuckler, uh, she's the only actress to have worked with all three of the big three from Jaws. So, okay, yeah. all right. I am trying to keep on top of uh, of our. We got tons of messages. Good to see a lot of people out here tonight. Very good. A lot of enthusiasm. Keeps us on our toes. So I put this together, Mike, and this is more uh, this is more a selfish move on my part. So um, obviously Jaws 1, filmed in Martha's Vineyard. Obviously chunks of Jaws 2, primarily early on, filmed in Martha's Vineyard and then in Noir Beach. And at times they do a seamless job. Like, for example, when they show Brody, he's kind of walking down what appears to be, I'm not sure if it's Water Street or whatever, that he was in Martha's Vineyard, and it cuts right into going into the Amity Town Hall, that obviously is not the mm -hmm. Anchor Town Hall piece together. But one of the things that always, um, to this day, stands out to me glaringly is when you look at the beaches and the water, there is a very, very distinct difference. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the, the pictures on the left are all stills that I took right from 
right from Jaws 2. And, and, and you know, and uh, I believe it's uh, one of the characters even mentions, you know, the sand is like sugar. It's exactly what it looks like. Uh, it, it, in fact, in my searches, you know, looking at those three pictures, if you guys don't recognize, that's our buddy Mike there in the middle. In my searches, trying to find the VAR beach of Jaws 2, I happen to find a picture of Mike. Posing oh, really? for a picture down there at the beach. That's you in the middle. There, my. Oh, no, I didn't know it was, it was part of the search. Yeah. Can't believe the stuff I dig up on you. Not that I'm stalking you, Mike. But it, again, research only. This is what I'm looking for. <laughs> the, main, the, the really biggest jump, um, you can tell the difference, is when Brody's driving to the Holiday Inn at the beginning. And he, yeah. he gets to a bridge, and it's the vineyard. When he gets over, uh, he's in Florida. Uh, you can really tell under the beach with the water. Uh, Destin and Navarre and all that, it's called the Emerald Coast uh, because that water is is, is uh, light green and you can see to the bottom. And mm -hmm. I guess the other day they had a, a bear. There was a bear in the water uh, on the beach at Destin. Swimming. Uh, I saw that. <laughs> so, you know, next time I go, I'd worry about sharks. i got to worry about bears. <laughs> Black bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I threw the two pictures at the very bottom of the screen. The picture on the right is coming right past the Gay Head Lighthouse, right out of Jaws Two. And you're right; as soon as it goes across the the, the, the old uh, bridge there on, on Chappaquiddick, then in the left you see him going through the white sand, pulling up to the Holiday Inn. You know, and saying, "You know, I'm late. Couldn't find the keys." And you know, and, and so yeah. But uh, it's just something that always stood out for me. As good of a job as they did, it's one thing I. I, I look forward to the, to that point now, and, and they kind of still flip back and forth, but uh, yeah. So at any rate, um, while we're at it, I also hit a little bit on the shark. Um, now, you know, obviously the shark was female. Nickname was Brucette. Um, you know, I believe this one was cut was not cut. This one was made from the mold, the leftover mold from the from Bruce from Jaws One. Is that right? Uh, no. Which oh, one? okay. As far as I know, it's all, it's all a new, sh uh, a new, uh, all new sharks because it was, uh, it was made different. You can tell it's different by the. It There's no have, jowls. Doesn't have jowls. Right. Okay. Well, again, my mistake. That's why I knew we'd be coming on here, and uh, you guys would be setting me straight on some of this stuff. Um, and I definitely refer to it as brucette because one thing I noticed is when they got rid of the jowls, it has a very big underbite. If you look at the bottom right, kind of something I always notice, and I'm sure they did that to help with the effect of the chomping mouth or the closing mouth. And so always really stood out with me. And I would assume they had quite a few sharks because obviously beginning of the movie, the shark didn't have any scarring. And then the shark gets burned and takes on that kind of grotesque, you know, villain look. So I, I would assume... There was quite a few different ones that they had to use. Well, they had different, uh, kind of like the first Jaws. Um, they had uh, like a right side shark and a left side shark. Um, mm -hmm. so all, all they really had to do was scar the the right side shark's face uh, when you're only seeing it from, you know, from that angle. Um, but it, but again, it was the same. The same issue was the shark. It, they still didn't work, no matter what. No matter what, what they look like, they, they just didn't work. Hmm. Yeah, and I know some of the shots that they got, I know particularly the one up in the upper right-hand corner, which I, I don't care what happened, uh, that shot was amazing. Uh, you know, when the shark came up and was uh, was trying to get uh, Brody, who was unconscious in the water, um, they said uh, the, how dangerous that shot was because the cables that were towing the shark that were literally – gleaming off of the boat as they were trying to pull the scene off. They were so afraid of literally getting, you know, decapitated or hit by one of those steel cables. And I guess they worked, I don't know, for a day or two trying to get that shot in. And, you know, the shark would be too far away. It wouldn't make it in. And finally, you know, the timing was right and they got it. Unfortunately, you know, you can see the mouth cave and a little bit of hydraulics, but uh, I don't care. I thought that was an absolutely amazing scene. In fact, I think, there's a couple action scenes from Jaws 2 that probably outdid as far as their, their technical aspect, some of the action scenes in Jaws 1. To be very oh, yeah. honest with you, they, they had to to an extent. So, but, so sorry that mouth was horrible, but I, that was an amazing shot. Um, unbelievable shot. Yeah. 
So I, I want to put a plug in here about some daily jaws, and it's definitely something we can bring it up. And I know we talked about it. Um, daily jaws has really put together. I'm going to see if I can get a screen set up for that. Um, here they have put together a huge compilation as well as a whole new series of interviews um, for um, the uh, people of, of, of Jaws 2, for the characters and the actors in Jaws 2. And so uh, let me see if I can get that. I have to drop one of my other screens here in order to do that. So let me do that. And um, I will attempt to pull that up for you guys. And if you haven't checked it out, you really need to get over there. I mean, you know, we often say how Ross Williams just does such an amazing job um, with how he comes up with material day in and day out. I, I honestly don't know how he does it. But um, uh, on top of that, yeah, he's so on top of his topic. All right, I think I've got it here. So, yep, yeah, there we are. Um, he's so on top of things with his topic. So we have the, um, the 45th anniversary interview series. And if you scroll down from there, there's at least uh, one, two, three, four, looks like five separate recent topics based on the, um, based on Jaws 2. So if you guys get a chance, get on there. I watched a little bit of the interviews. I haven't watched all of them yet. But get on there and check them out. Some really, really good stuff on there. Uh, updated material. They'll be newer than what we've seen in the past. So um, Ross, just uh, amazing job. I try and get on there at least two, three times a week just to see what he's coming up with and some of the relevant topics. And it, whether it's little or small, I mean, it, he's constantly changing, constantly digging for new material. So, well, I've got six pieces coming up this month on Jaws Two or Jaws Two based. Um, I just turned in one um, about uh, Sarah Holcomb, uh, who was cast in Jaws Two, uh, did a couple of movies and left Hollywood. Um, it's a it's it's a it's a sad story with a happy ending. Um, uh, the one where uh, the one you when you scrolled up, uh, why Dreyfus wasn't in it, why uh, Spielberg didn't do it. Um, yeah, this month is very very Jaws two centric. Um, so. There we go. Yeah, yep. definitely a lot going on there. Original merchandise that was pretty interesting. I dove into there a little bit. See some of the different things that uh, that came out as well. So I have my Jaws two Halloween costume. Yeah, do you really? No kidding. I didn't, I didn't wear it. I was much too old. But sure, just like a vinyl, you know, the old the kind of speed, a little vinyl thing with the tie in the back. It says Jaws and a plastic sharp mask. But, yeah. Oh, it, and the the rubber band that was held on by that one staple. You know yes. I mean? you put it, you put it on like three times and it would snap. So you tie it back off. Or the rubber band, no matter what you did, would grab your hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Roll up in your hair. And then you retied it, so then you felt like you were slicing your eyeballs. And... <laughs> good good times, Mike. That's why we made our costumes back then, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, and, uh, yeah, so that being said, I thought we'd throw in just a little bit of some of the Jaws 2 merchandise. Some of the things I remember, I remember having a cup. I definitely, definitely remember the Jaws game, you know, you, all the trinkets on his lever jaw, and you pick them up one by one, and, you know, as the weight would become less. It'd snap, yeah. Snap shut. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the Jaws 2 soundtrack, which, you know, as much as I love Jaws, I gotta say, I think the Jaws 2 soundtrack probably outdoes the original. Well, they writ Entrada did a new version, or an updated version, a couple years ago, because mm -hmm. the original one, um, doesn't have all the music in it. It's not in any particular order. And Entrada did like a double album where um, it was all the music, all the cues in the right order. And then on the other side, you had the original version. But um, yeah, so if you know if you, if you if you have the old soundtrack album, you listen to it, you go, where's where's that part? I love that music. It's on the uh, uh, the newer edition they did. Uh huh. All right. And yes, the Jaws two cards are a must. I did get mine out. I did. Uh, I got. I got like three packs of these guys that I picked up. Uh, if you ever go to the vineyard, um, if you go up uh, uh, Circuit Avenue in Oak Bluffs, it's like second or third store on the right. Um, it is the brother of the. Um, oh, geez. It was the one that passed away. Oh, Chris Bell. 
Yes, it's Christopher Bellett's brother. He owns the shop. And you'll know when you go in, because not only do you see a lot of Jaws advertising, you go in the back, there's a banner from, I believe it's from Jaws Fest of 05 or 12, I'm not sure which. He also has some original few cards and stuff up there, and he has some older things in a case. And so when I was there, he had uh, an entire set of these Jaws cards, and I happened to buy three packs of them so that are unopened. So I do have a couple of those sitting around. Uh, yeah, well, I've got... I've got like 10 sets of them, but mm -hmm. I, I, I bought, I mean, I, I had a couple, but I bought them because, um, if you buy the color book, you get, you get a free card. And I tried to, uh, the first 59 books, both paperback and soft cover, um, or soft cover and, and hardback, they got the corresponding card number. So if you have book number, 28 out of, out of a thousand you've got card number 28 so yeah nice That's little good. nice little giveaway yeah yeah i like those cups the only one the only one i've got is the one in the top top left i'm gonna look for oh, some, just the other one. yeah mm -hmm. yes someone had a full set going on there a picture i happened to stumble across and uh yeah and the album down below if you look there's a little jaws 2 cardboard Foldable stand up. I don't know if something you could hang from the ceiling with a mobile or something you put on the table. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm not sure they, they were obviously around, but yeah, that was kind of interesting. So it's kind of funny. I, I search so hard for some things and other things you just kind of stumble across. So it really kind of stood out. So yeah, and so uh, definitely got some people in here uh, talking about some of the kids. So I thought I could shed a little light on the kids. Um, at least show, I, I try to get a little kind of like then and now kind of picture just to kind of, you know, mention there. And um, while I'm, while we're talking about the kids, if you haven't had a chance to pick up a copy of Mike's book, um, I got a couple years ago for Father's Day. I think I think I showed you pictures a couple of episodes ago of me sitting, sitting in Inkwell, reading it on Father's Day. And a lot of good uh, parts in there where he, Mike has interviews from each of the kids, and not only from the kids that were in the movie, but interviews from the, from the previous group, the kids that weren't in the in the movie. And so I got to say, I really kind of dove into that. So a lot of interest in that myself. So if you guys don't have it, go pick it up. Really good stuff. It's uh, Thank you. Yeah, very much so. But yeah, so we'll kind of just go through it. And, I try to get a, a new and old picture of each, or fairly current. Some are a little harder to find than others. Um, some I really had to really struggle to find. Um, so I've got some of the typical hitters, and I try to do a little dive into what they did career-wise after. Some of them stayed. Uh, Donna Wilkes definitely. I think she's still a bit of a screen queen, still doing some things. Um, obviously, I can't think of his name on the right. Uh, you know, after Jaws 2, I think my, my most favorite film of his would probably be Christine. And I think yeah. he's done some either some, some production work too or something like that. Yeah, Keith Gordon is, is now a director. Um he's got a couple of great films. He got did a film, um, World War II film called Midnight Clear, which is really, really good. Um Keith is the most successful actor um to come out of Jaws 2 as an actor. I mean, they've all done uh, great stuff. Uh, David Elliott down below, Larry Vaughn Jr. Um, uh, he is uh, uh, head of his uh, of his local um, uh, union local. He is an author. Um, Gigi um, over on the right, uh, she is an author. Uh, her and her husband have have published a dozen books, I believe. Um, they've all gone on to some kind of not necessarily notoriety, but it's not, you know, they're not, it's not like, oh, whatever happened to, um, I mean, the only one who kind of really uh, retired from acting after, after Jaws 2 was, was Mark Gruner, it was Mike Brody. Um, but um, the rest of them, you know, did it for a couple of years, but they've all done very well in whatever their, you know, their chosen, chosen profession is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some I know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of which one it was. Was it Martha uh, Swayczak? I believe she ended up going into teaching or something along those lines, education. 
Martha is a, is a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I actually sent her an email the other day. I found a making of uh, Jaws 2 uh, that somebody had done. I'd watched it a couple of years ago, but I didn't watch the whole thing. And I watched it, and it said that Martha was a, went on to be a lawyer, and she's a crusader. And I sent her a link, and I said, I didn't know you were a lawyer. I thought you were a teacher. Because um, actually a friend of mine out in California had her as a teacher. Um, but, uh, you know, the rest, Ann Dusenberry, of course, um, mm -hmm. top right, uh, uh, John Dukakis, uh, his dad ran for president. Um, mm -hmm. He did a lot of, uh, he did a lot in the music industry. He was uh, worked a lot with Prince, um, Gary Springer. Uh, and Gary's Gary's episode, I believe, of uh, Let's Talk Jaws Live is the most popular one on YouTube, the most watched. Um, Gary's dad was a uh, very big uh, public relations guy. Gary has a public uh, relations firm. Uh, in fact, he just, I got an email from him today about a film that he's promoting. Um, but long before I started doing the book, he reached out to me as a film critic and said, hey, um, would you be interested in this? And it was P.S. He goes, I was in Jaws too. And I was like, oh, yeah, you bet I will. You bet I will. Um, over on the bottom, uh, bottom right, uh, Martin Gilpin and um, his sister April. Uh, April was a little girl um, that uh, pointed out the Shark Tower. Uh, April sadly uh, passed away a few years ago. Uh, and the updated version of the book is uh, – uh, dedicated to her and, and a couple other people, Gary Dubin, um, that had passed since the first edition came out. Yeah, I had no idea that was his sister until I started to do the research. And yeah, I saw she, I think she passed away in 2018. And I believe their other sister, I, I don't think she's older, she's probably a younger sister, um, uh, Perry Gilbin, Gilpin, uh, it was Roz on, um, not Roz, yeah, Roz on Frasier. No, no kidding, really? And then there was a, a woman's wrestling show called Glow. But there was a Betty Gilpin in that. And I, I, I never watched it, but I always thought if that was also also a, a relative. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if you guys at home are aware, but he was... I believe diagnosed was it a brain tumor months ago. I'm sorry. I believe he. I believe Mark was diagnosed. I think it was brain tumor about eight months ago, maybe six months ago, something like that. Uh, and there was a GoFundMe that was set aside, I believe, to help him out as well as the family. It's but sad. Am when I, correct? I, I don't remember. Yeah, some type of medical. I could be off as to what it was, but I thought it was some type. It was a Pretty serious medical issue that he was uh, that he was hit with, and uh, I, I believe that Daily Jaws, if I'm not mistaken, had put together um, or at least brought into light the fact that they were trying to get funds together. Maybe something to look into. Um, yeah, Mark Mike Gruner or, or Mark guys. Gilpin? Mark Gilpin? I think Gilpin. I'm almost positive Gilpin. Yeah, I, I again, if I if I'm wrong on that, I apologize. I will go back and check on that, but I. I'm pretty sure. In fact, I think it came up on one of the episodes. This probably would have been. I want to say it was over the winter time, Mike. I, uh, I'm not sure. I'll. Uh, you know what? I need to can that. I let me do a little look uh, research on that. I don't want to go spreading any vicious rumors. But I. I I'm, oh, there was a fundraiser for Lisa Gilpin. Maybe that's what it is. By Mark Gilpin and Family's Medical Fund. Yeah. Yeah, and it was something medical related. I, I, yeah, I, 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 I hadn't heard that Mark was sick. I, I apologize if that's that very well could be my oh, no. misleading. And I hope I hope things worked out for for Lisa. I hadn't heard anything. Yeah, yeah, but I, I do know there was some illness involved. So, but I'm gonna, my dog wants to go out, and I'm the only one home. Give me a second. So hey, she's not, no, no, said, no problem. I will. Uh, we'll, we'll jump right in here. Yeah, so then uh, here we go on this page, guys. Uh, probably some of you guys have caught some of the uh, some of the interviews here. I have to say, probably one of my favorite ones was was um, top right. Uh, and I am horrible with names, but um, whether or not 
you remember his name or not, you obviously remember his face from Jaws 2. He's also in a scene in Jaws 1, native to the island, still lives on the island. Um, Sorry. His, no, no. Elusive squirrel that's out there every day. And I don't know why she thinks she's going to catch it today. Tempting, right? <laughs> nah, take it west. <laughs> that's my cat with the birds. Uh, I get it. <laughs> Uh, at any rate, I was talking about the gentleman in the upper right-hand corner there and his ties with the island, or Timmy, uh, and his uh, ties with the island and boating and, and the knowledge that he had on his interview. I guess his, he was involved as well as his father with you know with some of the boats on the vineyard and how yeah. Tom neat, how he is the patron saint of the Jaws 2 book. Um, really? he, uh, he was the first one that Lou and I told we were doing a book. And to his credit, he mocked us um, because he just thought we were a couple guys just saying, we'll do this. Like, let's go put on a show in the barn. Um, but he told us if we could prove we were serious, that he would help us. And uh, there you go. That's a crock of shit. And um, that's um, he did. Um, I, I, I would embarrass him uh, if I told all the all the ways that, that he helped us. Um, but yeah, uh, if I had a writing question, um, that's who I would go to. So, uh, you know, Tom is the patron saint, patron saint of that book. And if you nerd out on history and stuff like that, like I do, um, you yeah. know that he put out a killer book and disc on the Chappie Ferry. Uh, I was able to grab a copy while I was there the last time. Very good. Yeah. All right. So what we got here? Just a shame Marge didn't let Sean go and stay on the boat. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> that, was pretty, that was a rough scene. <laughs> yeah. What still gets me isn't the shark coming up over top. But you, you get a little bit of a bone crunch right there at the end. Yeah. <laughs> and there is, um, I'm finishing up another piece for the Jaws 2 about uh, the Mandela effect. Uh, only only uh, felt in Ireland uh, where for oh, years... Yeah. For years, uh, people in Ireland swore that they saw a shot of Marge in, inside the shark's mouth. Um, so um, that's uh, what I'm finishing up for for this month. Um, but Martha, very nice. Uh, every now and then she pops in uh, and watches the show, which is great. Very cool. So, Kelly, why does she flip her boat over? I'm not uh, fabulous with boats. I've had boats for a while, but one of the things that I learned growing up, we actually took some classes in canoes, is if you flip one, or if you do go under and you swamp the boat, or the boat goes over water, um, the easiest way to get rid of the water is just simply to flip the boat over. Uh, ah. Something to do with what they did, because if you get in a, into a swamp boat, it's not going to help you out at all, but if you turn the boat over, it can, in that case, give them a chance to get out of the water. But if you turn the boat over, get the water out of the boat, then you can, I guess you could then attempt, in theory, flip the boat back over and have an empty boat. Yeah. Of course, and that would make sense because uh, Martha and her sister Susie and her other sister, whose name just went out of my head, um, they were hired. They were, they were also teaching. Uh, they were expert boaters. Um, so that would make sense. She probably knew, you know, she probably knew to, to – uh, you know, throw the boat over, um, you know, and you know, I'm sure, uh, uh, you know, I'm sure Jano said, why did you do that? And she probably explained to him. Um, I remember on the set of uh, Major League Two, uh, there's a runner coming home and Kevin Hickey's playing the pitcher, uh, runs to back up the throw home. And the director, David Ward, is, you know, why, why did you cut in my shot? Why did you go back there? And he says, that's what you do in a baseball game. So... <laughs> You know, so maybe Martha said, that's what you do if your boat sinks. Um, but yeah. And then uh, Ben Marley, Ben Marley and uh, Cindy on the right there. Yeah, I didn't realize how many different movies Ben Marley was in until I started to look him yeah. up. I mean, yeah. he did a lot of stuff. And his father is, uh, was the, uh, was Jack Waltz. He was the studio executive that wakes up with the horse, horse head in his bed in The Godfather. In The Godfather. <laughs> I got kidding me. I gotta throw that up. We got another Mike's back going on here, people. All right. Very nice. 
Well, we're uh, we're, we're kind of coming to an end. It's a little bit over an hour, and um, I, I was going to wrap things up. Is that the but Sham Wow guy? That that is the Sham Wow guy. When we got always, arrested, I always thought it was Johnny Knoxville. I was saying, no. is that was that Johnny Knoxville's a Sham Wow guy? But I'm guessing it's not. <laughs> that is a Sham Wow guy who I believe. Lost his uh, his internet career because he got picked up. Uh, I believe picking up a prostitute, which is why uh, well. he's no longer selling sham. Wow! <laughs> but uh, the reason why I put this up here, Mike, is because I was you know doing some research and, and and trying to find some facts and some background information, and uh, I happened to come across uh, uh, something. And uh, uh, people at home, Mike, didn't know about this. I just thought I'd spring this. So instead of you know traditionally playing a song at the end, I thought we would watch an old interview. Of Mike uh, happened to be on the local Fox News station. Uh, I don't know, a handful of years ago. Uh, so uh, I thought we'd end the show with that, Mike. If, if that's all right with you, buddy. Sure. And it's uh, uh, displaying uh, a bit of your memorabilia, and you talk a little bit about your book, guys. So uh, the seven thirty-seven. I, I think it's like four minutes, five minutes, something like that. So I'm going to pull this up, guys, and, and I'm going to let this roll out. And so I'm going to say my goodbyes now to everybody. Um, and this will be how we end tonight. So, is this? Stop let me, yeah. is, is this the one where um, do, do they show the clapboard, the Jaws two clapboard? Don't I, don't I can't remember what interview it was, but uh, I'll tell a quick story. Um, when I was down in uh, Destin uh, for the 40th anniversary uh, book signing, a gentleman came in with a clapboard, and um, it had um, uh, the adhesive tape stuck to the back because usually like scene three, they just paint, you know, three and they stick it on there. And he and his brothers had uh, been out on the Gulf of Mexico in 1980 and they were casting and they caught it in their net. And the fact that it survived in the Gulf of Mexico for three years. Holy cow. Just, just blew my mind. And um, it's a because it, he came to me and he said, is this real? You know, and I looked in the book and I actually have a picture of Jeff Kramer holding that clapboard. So uh, he was excited. But I was just like, wow, that's uh, that's it's just amazing. I mean, just the story that it survived, it, it, it you know, the tape, the adhesive on the tape didn't come loose in the salt water, and it didn't you know, the chalk didn't didn't write, you know, didn't rub off. So, yeah, I don't know if this is it or not, but if not, that's a, a little Mike's Facts uh, clapboard story. Well, so. I know what to look for for the next time. So, looks like people are excited to watch the interview. So, further ado, thanks yeah. for tonight, guys. Fins uh, up, everybody. Fins up, and we'll let this roll us out. I'll cut us off when we're done. Thank you very much, everyone showing up. Thanks for your comments, and uh, it's been fun. So, here we go. Don't forget Tuesday, June 20th, Jaws Day. Tell your friends. Ah. All right. Yes, it has. We're old. Jaws 2 came out 40 years ago. Yep. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Russ Simmons uh, joins us with possibly oh, this is here in Kansas City. Okay. Jaws fan. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. That's right. Kansas City-based filmmaker Michael Smith joins us now. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. You know, he wrote the book about the making of the iconic movie sequel, so I'm curious, what is it about the movie Jaws that has so captured your imagination? It was the first movie that I saw that I actually thought about afterwards. I was I was actually went to see it for my 15th birthday, and it's still the it's still the film 43 years later that I compare to every other movie that I see. Now we we're looking at some of your collection right here in front of us. So how many of the Jaws Jaws piece do you think you have in your collection? Oh, hundreds, hundreds. And uh, what do you, would you assess the value of them as being, perhaps? Uh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very understanding wife. Right? I do indeed. Yeah. So what inspired you to write this book, Jaws 2, The Making of the Hollywood Sequel? Well, there are so many books written about Jaws, and a couple friends of mine wrote a book in 2011 detailing the making of Jaws through the words and photos of the cast and crew. So... Um, we decided to take it to Jaws 2 to continue the story and also comment on the sequelization of 
of Hollywood. I mean, the night now the top ten box office movies, eight of them are sequels. Right. And you know, you talked to just about everyone who was involved with this yes. movie. What did you find out about the making of this movie that really surprised you? Uh, Hollywood is mean. <laughs> uh, actors were fired because they went to their grandmother's funeral. Uh, the original director uh, had a production meeting, shook everybody's hand, and instead of going to the set, they drove him to the airport. Ouch. While they were talking, they had packed up his house. That's how he knew he was fired. Uh -huh. <laughs> and where did they film? Uh, they filmed in Martha's Vineyard and then Destin in uh, Panama City, Florida. And you're traveling around, you're doing book signings. And yes. I know that uh, you can hear Michael Smith's reviews and his interviews at uh, mediamikes.com. But how does one get a copy of the book? Uh, they can go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com uh, backslash Shaw's 2 book, or they can email me at uh, osfanmike at aol.com. All right, there it is right there on the screen. You can find out also where you can get the book. A little bit later, we're going to be giving away some of these copies on our Fox 4 Screening Room Facebook page, so check us out, Fox 4 Screening Room Facebook page. Good stuff, Mike. Oh, thank you. Boy, can my face look any fatter? Good guy. <laughs> hey, it was good. It was really good. Uh, and, you know, the cover that they showed there at the end doesn't look like the cover. That was the original book. That was the original okay. edition. Okay. Uh, the for, for the 40th anniversary, I did the updated uh, with, like, 200 more pictures and uh, I think 13 more interviews. Awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Um, Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Thank you for the inundating us with the comments. It was great to see a lot of people back we haven't seen in quite a while. And uh, you guys have a wonderful week. And, uh, Mike, thanks for letting me embarrass you there a little bit. But, uh, uh, not at all. That was good. See one, of those, one of those lenses that made me look uh, tall and thin like you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I could be lying to you. you, know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good evening, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. See you next week.